In this lecture, we will understand what is Nyquist rate and what is Nyquist interval. And once we are done with the explanation part, we will solve one example problem. And now we will begin our discussion with the revision of the concepts we developed in the previous lecture. We saw the case of oversampling and the case of undersampling. In oversampling, we saw omega s, which is the sampling frequency, is greater than twice of omega m. Omega m is the maximum frequency component of the message signal. And when this happens, you will find the shifted spectrums of the message signal are having sufficient gap between them and there will be no overlapping and therefore we can recover the message signal from the sampled signal. So this oversampling case is the preferred case. This is allowed and we know omega s is equal to 2 pi divided by ts or we can write 2 pi multiplied to fs and we can write twice of omega m equal to 2 multiplied to 2 pi fm and from here we are getting 2 pi fs is greater than 2 multiplied to 2 pi fm 2 pi 2 pi will cancel out so we are finally getting fs greater than twice of fm so this condition is allowed and in this condition there will be no overlapping now in case of undersampling we saw omega s is less than twice of omega m and undersampling is not allowed because in this case there is overlapping between the shifted spectrums of the message signal and therefore when we try to recover the message signal from the sampled signal it won't be possible therefore this case is not allowed and from here we will get fs less than twice of fm we saw one more case in which omega s was equal to twice of omega m and in this case the shifted spectrums of message signal was touching and this case is also allowed because in this case there is no overlapping and we can recover the message signal from the sampled signal and from here we can say that fs will be equal to twice of fm now this fs is known as nyquist rate so remember fs is equal to twice of fm and to calculate the nyquist interval we will simply use the relation between frequency and the time period we know time period is equal to 1 over frequency so from here we are getting ts equal to 1 over twice of fm so this is known as the nyquist interval and in questions they will ask you to calculate the nyquist rate this means you need to calculate fs and they will ask you to calculate the nyquist interval this means you need to calculate ts and both the parameters will be calculated after calculating the maximum frequency component of the message signal which is omega m to understand this in a better way let's solve one example problem in this example problem we need to find the nyquist rate this means we need to find fs and we also need to find the nyquist interval this means we need to find ts and we need to find them for the following signal this signal here mt is the message signal and it is equal to cos 100 pi t plus sine 200 pi t so here we are having two frequency components and to find omega m we need to find the maximum frequency component so let's understand how we can solve this problem let's say the message signal is composed of two signals x1t and x2t signal x1t is equal to cos 100 pi t signal x1t is equal to cos 100 pi t 
and signal x to t is equal to twice of sine 200 pi t x to t is equal to twice of sine 200 pi t and comparing it with the standard cosine function we can obtain the value of angular frequency you will find angular frequency is equal to 100 pi in this case and it is equal to 200 pi in this case so let's say in the first signal the angular frequency is omega 1 and it is equal to 100 pi as you can see and in the second signal the angular frequency is omega 2 and it is 200 pi now compare omega 1 and omega 2 you will find omega 1 is less than omega 2 and we are looking for the maximum frequency component and out of omega 1 and omega 2 omega 2 is the maximum frequency component therefore omega m is equal to omega 2 and it is equal to 200 pi now we have omega m we can calculate omega s or we can directly calculate fm we can calculate fm because we know fm is equal to omega m divided by 2 pi omega m is 200 pi so we will get fm equal to 200 pi divided by 2 pi and this is equal to 100 and the unit will be hertz and uh, we know the angular frequency is having the unit radians per second now it is very easy to calculate the nyquist rate fs because we have calculated fm and the only thing required is to multiply 2 to fm so let's calculate Nyquist rate fs it is equal to 2 multiplied to fm which is 100 hertz so finally we are getting the Nyquist rate equal to 200 hertz this is the answer and to calculate the Nyquist interval ts you can use this 1 over 2 fm or you can directly use this we have calculated fs so we will use 1 over fs ts will be equal to 1 divided by 200 seconds when you simplify this you will get ts is equal to 5 milliseconds and this is our answer so this is all for this lecture and i will end it here see you in the next one